In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your rear brakes, that's drum and shoes, as well as all of the hardware that goes with them. Let's get started. Use a 21 millimeter socket and take off all five of your lug nuts so we can take the wheel off. Now you have a couple different options for removing this drum. As you can see, mine is seized on here. So what you can try is to hit it with a hammer in this area. Just make sure you don't hit the lug studs because then you'll damage the threads and that should break it free from the hub. I'm going to give that a try, but if it doesn't work or if you don't want to do it that way, you also have two eight by 125 threaded bolt holes here in which you can put two bolts and as you tighten those, it will actually push the drum off and break it free. Looks like we'll have to go the route of two bolts. Spray some rust penetrant in here to help break things free. I'm going to quickly put a lug nut on here so that in case this pops off and wants to come flying, it can't hit me. Gently pry it from the back side. At this point, all that's holding us up is the brake shoes. So just be gentle and walk it back and forth. In order to release the drum, you'll see that on the back side, there's a little rubber boot here that if we take off, we will have access to the adjuster. And if we turn it to contract the shoes and squeeze them together, then we'll be able to easily remove this drum. So pop that boot off. And then you can either use a screwdriver or a little pry bar, whatever you have. And there's gonna be an adjuster wheel here. You just have to get in there and adjust it. It looks kind of like a gear. In my case, I'm gonna have to spin up on it to release the shoes. Now back at the front, you can see the drum pulls off much easier. And this could have been part of our problem. This shoe was not attached anymore because the hardware is broken. So we're gonna address that issue. What I want to do next is spray brake parts cleaner all over this area so I can eliminate as much dust as possible. That way I don't breathe it in. If this shoe still had its retaining hardware, I would start here, but since it doesn't, Let's go up top and remove the spring that goes across the top of these shoes. As you can see, there's this one, which I will grip with my locking pliers and remove off of this adjuster lever, release it. And then there's one that's on the inside here, which you can either pop off with a pry bar or a screwdriver, or we can wait until the shoe is off. And then all we have to do is twist it. I'm gonna give this a try, but if it doesn't work, we'll just take the shoe off. There we go. These springs are not very tough. And that's it. This shoe is off, but not completely because other than that, it's attached to the parking brake cable. So let's remove this. Now you can do two things here. You can remove this cable off of this arm and then transfer the arm over on your workbench. Or you can do what I'm about to do, which is leave the cable attached and just pop off this clip here, which you have to do anyway to transfer the arm over to the new shoe and then put a new clip on. Doing it this way avoids taking this cable out and struggling with it because sometimes they are a bit of a struggle. So just leave that attached and let's take this clip off. The best way I found to remove these is just with a screwdriver, put it in here and twist it. And then once you give it one or two twists, you can usually use the shoe and pry this out. And once you get it to this point, you can stick a screwdriver on the back side and finish prying it out. And there you have it. Now the arm should be released. 
If you don't have a new one of these clips, you can reuse it, but be very careful because this is metal and every time you squeeze it and expand it, it is much more likely to break. And you definitely don't want this coming loose inside your brakes, so preferably replace it. At the top, we can remove the adjuster and this is what we spun from the backside, this little wheel. As you can see, it's on a threaded rod here and basically it just expands or contracts the shoes. We'll set this aside, we'll clean it up and reuse this. You have two more springs here that you can simply unhook from the forward shoe. Just keep in mind the way they go, you can always reference the other side or this video, but both springs have this 90 degree hook on them that hooks onto the front shoe and then the 180 degree hook that hooks onto the rear shoe. So just make sure that when you put them back, you put them both the same way. To get that one out, we're just gonna have to wait until we remove the retainer for the shoe. And to do this, hold the pin from the backside and on these, what I usually do is I just use my fingers because these springs are very weak and twist it. I'm holding the pin so the pin doesn't spin, but I'm twisting this cap until eventually it'll pop out. Now, as you can see, mine had a lot of debris here, so it took a little bit to pop out, but there you have it. It just has this flat area that needs to line up with the slot and then it's released. Now this shoe is free to come out and we can remove the spring. Let's give everything another good cleaning. And now I'm gonna take my wire brush and brush these spots off, these indented areas off of the backing plate because I want this to be nice and clean because this is where the shoes pivot as you apply the brakes. I'm gonna use this scraper and just scrape the main debris off of here. And then use my wire brush, clean the rest of it. While we're on the topic of cleaning, this is the best time to do this because you don't have the shoes in the way to contaminate them, but you wanna clean the surface of the hub here so that the new drum can have a good area to mount on, nice and flat, no debris, no raised areas. You want this nice and corrosion free. Doesn't have to look perfect, but it does have to be clean. And then we'll coat it with anti-seize to prevent any further rust from happening. I'm not going to coat it yet because I will get it all over my hands if I do. I'm gonna to wait to do this until later, but at least it's nice and clean and ready to go. What I do wanna do though is put a little bit of brake grease on the areas where the shoes ride because if you don't lubricate it, it will squeak and then you'll get strange noises when you apply the brakes and you definitely don't want that. Another area I like to grease is right on the wheel cylinder where the brake shoes sit for the same exact reason. And of course on the other side, don't apply a lot because you don't want it to start flinging all over or melting. You just want it to be coated. And of course, this will also prevent rust from building up. And put some on the bottom here where the shoes sit. Okay, let's put the shoes on. Take the front facing shoe and make sure it has this cutout at the top. This is where the adjuster is gonna go and this notch here sits inside the wheel cylinder. So make sure you don't put it upside down or confuse the two, which is somewhat impossible because they only fit one way and this lever only fits onto one of them. Anyway, slide your pin in through the backside and through the mounting location on the shoe. Situate the shoe where it needs to be. Get the spring on here. Put the cap over the spring. Line up the notch on the pin and twist it and lock it in. You have to twist it 90 degrees for it to completely lock in. Make sure the shoe is sitting where it needs to be and be careful when you do this. You don't wanna blow out the wheel cylinder. Then you'll have other issues. Before it's too late, let's install the inner spring at the top, which is the one that has the larger hook. The other one has just a very tight bend on it. So make sure you slide this in. Now, you might say this would have been easier to do earlier. However, if you do it earlier, it's gonna keep falling off on you as you try to put the shoe in. So it's kind of tricky. Okay, got it in. Make sure the shoe is still sitting right where it needs to. Let that rest up there. Next is going to be our adjuster. This one is not seized up, thankfully. A lot of times these do seize, but I still want to take it apart and clean it up. I wanna clean off all this debris on the threads, add some grease to them, and then put it back together. So what I'm gonna do is take this completely off so I can inspect everything. All the threads are good. This side has still a little bit of grease on it, but I'm going to reapply some grease 
and uh, I'm going to scoop what's in there out, remove that, get rid of it, clean these threads, put them back together. Okay, I worked in some fresh grease all over the threads. This spins nice and freely now all the way in as well as on this side. I coated it super smooth and now we can install it. The free spinning end had two cutouts. This one goes on the shoe and this one goes on the adjuster, which will come into play in a minute. But this side with a single cutout is going to be attached to this front pad. But in order to put this in, we actually have to attach that spring first, otherwise it's gonna be difficult to grab. So, so my plan is to put this shoe on, attach this, put that spring in, then put the adjuster in, and then the outer spring. Just imagine three different layers of steps basically. So when it comes to this shoe, you'll see that it already has a pin inserted in it, pressed. And we're actually not going to use this side with the large cutout. We're going to use the one with the smaller end. And that's because the parking brake lever will sit right here. And that's the area for the little clip to lock in. And then on this side is where the adjuster handle or lever sits. Optional, but recommended. Add a little bit of grease or anti-seize, high temperature anti-seize to this pin so that the parking brake lever can spin freely for a long time. Then take it and make sure you're installing it in the right direction. As you can see, it pretty much only fits one way. I have a new locking clip here. Slide it through and to lock it, you just have to pinch it with some pliers and squeeze it shut. Doesn't have to be perfect, but this is locked in nice and tight. It's not coming out. Flip the shoe over and let's reattach it. That spring needs to attach into this hole. And to do this, I'm going to try to bring the shoe in enough to hook it. I know it's difficult to see, but I'm just trying to bring the spring around and hook it on. Oh, I think I got it. Now I can pull the shoe, slide it into the wheel cylinder and compress that. I'm going to wait to attach this until the other springs are in because I'm gonna need to move it around in order to get everything else situated. However, I will reattach the bottom spring at this time and that was just the symmetrical looking spring with 180 degree hooks on both ends and they attach into the lower most holes. I'm actually going to go this way because it's easier for me to pull than it would be to push. Grab it with locking pliers again. That's just my preference. If you have a different method, go ahead and use that. Hook it on. Obviously, as you can see, this pad wants to pop out. Well, that's okay, it's not going to come off. Take your cleaned and prepped adjuster. You'll see that it has a single hook on one side, on the threaded side, and then a double hook on the non-threaded side. The single hook goes into the front shoe and the double hook goes into the rear shoe because this is also where the adjuster lever sits. Slide it in. The large hook goes on the shoe. And we're gonna have to pull this out so we can attach the rear just like so. The shoe fell out of the wheel cylinder. Make sure you reattach that. Okay. Now we just have to put on this little lever. You can, if you want to, grease up the pin where this sits so this can move freely. Just keep in mind that if you put too much grease, well, it's going to get on everything and that's not good. This just hooks on like so. And then the outer spring actually goes from here to here. All right. The last thing we have to do is secure this shoe onto the backing plate. Take your pin, slide it through the back side, put the spring over, put the cap over, line up the slot. A little trick is if you're struggling, you can just use those same locking pliers or any pliers really. And now use the pliers and twist it. The spring's sitting kind of crooked, so I'll fix that. Make sure it's all lined up. Perfect. With everything back together, we can now Put back this cover, the rubber cover, that covers up the adjuster. If you need to readjust later, just remove this. Now I have a new hub at this point, but even if you had the old one, you'd coat it in anti-seize. That way the drum doesn't seize on here and this will prevent rust from building up. A thin layer will do. You don't have to put a lot on. Make sure you go around this inner ridge here. Try not to get it onto the lug studs or the threads of the lug studs. Those should stay dry. 
Now I'm going to install my drum backwards only because I want to be able to clean this surface here. It's coated in oil from the factory so it doesn't rust while it's sitting on the shelf, but you don't want this oil on it when you're trying to use it. So spray it with brake parts cleaner and then get a clean rag and wipe it off. As you can see, quite a bit of junk comes off. Flip it around and install the drum. Now we do have to adjust it because we touched the adjuster so it's not exactly how it was before. To get the best result at this point, you wanna pull on the handbrake a couple times. That'll situate the shoes, maybe hit the brake pedal once or twice. I already did that, and as you can see, this spins freely. You do want a little bit of drag when it comes to drum brakes, so we're gonna take this back off and adjust the adjuster to expand the shoes just a little bit. So grab your screwdriver or pry bar, whatever you're using. And in my case, I actually have to spin this up I'm only going to turn it a few turns, put the drum back on. Pulled on the handbrake again, and as you can see, this now spins. And when I put the wheel on, I want this to spin freely about one turn. So let's test that out. I'm just going to put one lug nut on to hold the wheel. the wheel is wobbly but this is actually perfect it spins about one turn with with medium force when I spin it and there we go perfectly adjusted now these will self adjust as you drive so if you're worried that it's a little bit under adjusted you can either go from the back side or you can just pull on the parking brake while you're in reverse do that in a safe area such as an empty parking lot of course and that will self adjust the shoes in here to the perfect width and there you have it let's put the wheel on Put on all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 76 foot-pounds. Double check them. Okay. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.